Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited the president of decentralized real estate asset meta protocol Dream Chain, Mr. Pietro A. Doran. Welcome. Hey, thank you. So Good the last time you. I interviewed you, you were pretty skeptical on the whole blockchain industry itself. What's your take currently? Uh, well, I'll caveat that a little bit. I was, I've been skeptical about most of the platforms and propositions that I've heard up to now mm -hmm. for the application of blockchain. I find most of the, many of the ICOs I've read, uh, many of the presentations that I've come to are really based upon conceptual premise as opposed to empirical fact. Many of them are, are based on the hope of things happening so that they can apply their model. And Good. that's what you read as skeptical. The large theme when it comes to applying blockchain to real estate is fractional ownership. Do you believe that that has some sense to it or do you, are you still saying that it's a dream like long, you know, for the future? Again, you're saying still, but I've never been skeptical about that proposition. It's about the timing of that proposition. Mm -hmm. I absolute believer in the fractionalization of real estate. I've been in real estate 35 years uh, since I was a kid. I've been an investment banker. Mm -hmm. and I've been a developer, and I certainly know the concepts of securitization of real estate assets. These are not new concepts. Tokenization applied to that concept is, is new. The concept of derivative ownership uh, that securitization brought in, tokenization is another innovation uh, that creates a derivative of a derivative that has thus far not actually been applied simply because the regulatory environments do not exist to support that level of tokenization. Then how is the current regulatory status when it comes to real estate? There's a lot of changes. There's movements. There's, the, there's Switzerland that's really leading the, the uh, whole initiative mm -hmm. to validate the fractionalization ownership, tokenization. There's Malta's coming a long way. There's the, uh, uh, the Philippines that is also creating exchanges and whatnot to anticipate these changes. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, it's, it's got a, it still has a long way to go. And until the Americans have implemented the, the regulatory framework that will regulate that tokenization, it's difficult for the rest of the world to really be able to create a legitimate uh, exercise or a legitimate vehicle uh, that ignores the U.S. Well, a few months ago, the chairman of the American SEC claimed that he will not be changing the definition of security just for the sake of cr cryptocurrency. You believe that that is something that I think what he's really saying is, why should we have to? You show us how tokenization conforms to current regulatory framework under mm -hmm. securitization, and then we'll review it. It's not for us to now look at tokenization and make those changes purely for the convenience of people who would like to make money on yes, a new course. type, on an innovative principle. It's for those people to get best in class tax attorney, tax lawyers, tax uh, advisors, and other consultants to create the framework for being in compliance with those security laws. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite possible. But unfortunately, I think the experience levels of most people in blockchain is too low mm -hmm. to understand compliance is not something you need to be afraid of. When you're in private equity, you have to comply, and it's extraordinarily difficult to comply. Just because you're in private equity, it's not simple. <laughs> to be able to qualify and certify is, an, uh, is a long, tedious process that comes with enormous reporting obligations and responsibilities, So, and it's expensive. So if, if we're, if this blockchain, and it's not really the blockchain we're talking, we're talking tokenization. Those who want to participate in the, and, and push the innovative uh, ideas of tokenization and the opportunities it represents are going to have to figure out how you comply. That's all. So uh, moving on to the project Dream Chain. Right. So tell us a little bit. What is it? All right. Dream Chain is not revolutionary. I'm not really into creating something that's so brand new nobody understands it. And I don't want to be the old man in the block when it finally you know, gets accepted by a, by a large <laughs> audience. And, and, and you know, trying to educate the entire world into something that's supposed to be so radically new is just something I don't have the time for. Mm -hmm. uh, real estate by itself is probably one of the most resistant to change. Why change it? 
uh, the top five real estate companies uh, in the world generate, uh, well, let's say the top 15, uh, have generated 1.5 trillion U.S. dollars in transaction. Uh, they generated $44 billion in revenues. Uh, and almost nobody knows this. You know, nobody pays attention to the real estate markets like they do with Apple or one of the, you know, mm -hmm. one of the you know, IBMs or, 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 or Facebooks and others. It's a, the staid sort of, you know, <laughs> monolithic behind the scene uh, industry that's enormous. The top five of these companies represent 72% uh, of those transactions and 78% of those revenues. And the top five of those companies employ 215,000 people around the world. And it's like you don't hear about that very often. How, what an enormous, monolithic, and really almost monopolistic industry it has become. It's a 40-year-old model. It's still, there are, the real estate process is intrinsically complex. There are just so many parties to a transaction. It's not a stock trade. It's not a REIT where you just sell the shares. Uh, that's a part of real estate mm -hmm. as well. But when you're talking about transactions of large assets, you're talking you know, 50, 60 different parties being one way or another involved in the process, mm -hmm. which is a three-month process. We're not worried about TPS, transactions per second in real estate. So what did I see? I see that a 40-year-old model resistant to change, and I kind of think of it as like, if we look at uh, mobile phones, they're, they're sort of stuck in a 2G mm -hmm. environment where we think with the application of blockchain and tokenization, we can bring that up to 5G, but it's still a mobile phone, all right? You're still dialing the mobile phone. And whether it's 5G or 2G, the only thing you really notice is how slow this one is <laughs> as opposed to how fast and efficient and how useful this one is. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to achieve, okay? Number two, we talk about decentralization, okay? The decentralization that blockchain is supposed to bring. That really is a process. It's a process of changing a culture and creating a new platform that allows for the growth of that new culture. We call ourselves a uh, servant leader. We don't, as, as the, the dream global partner, well, organization. We don't see that suddenly you have these, what they call in the industry, blockchain dApps applications, mm -hmm. which I detest that word. I refuse to use it. <laughs> it's denigrating to firms. I, I think some millennials came up with that one. Um, these are independent, proud, actually what we, what we hope to identify successful companies. Uh, their problem right now with the current real estate market is these gigantic co companies control access to transaction mm -hmm. just by the sheer size of what they are. I see a great opportunity to start to collect a brand new community of independent companies under a common branding. Gather the little guys. Gather them together. And they don't have to always be little because it's tough for even pretty large size regional companies to be able to participate in the large institutional world of investments simply because they can't get on the preferred vendor list. So we think we can do something a bit different. We can start the process of decentralization through the application of smart contract that allows these companies to conduct business under the guidance of the dream chain because you need quality of work verification, not proof of work, that's another blockchain concept, but when we have a client that wants to utilize the dream chain, they're gonna know who those companies are. They're gonna be in the consolidated contract because we're proud of them, that they're part of the dream chain community. It's like a branding, is it? Yeah, it's a branding. And that branding is suddenly that Gunther and Son valuers in Germany suddenly has a global exposure to the institutional world because through the dream chain, their companies are out front and credited for the work that they do. And uh, the role, as I say, of, of the DCP partners, the DGP partners, is to be servant leaders. Our goal is over time increase the decentralized governance of this community that we build. As we build a culture of excellence, cohesion, a way of doing things that's always best in class. Now to the client, they don't need to know we're blockchain. Mm -hmm. They don't need to know about our tokenized environment. They're not gonna particularly, in my view, see that as a competitive advantage because all an investment manager wants to do 
is select the best service provider at a best pricing. And if we look radically new and different from the traditional real estate companies, it's going to, they're not going to understand that. So we follow a principle for those clients. It's called KISS, and it's called Keep It Simple Stupid. You go to our platform, and as far as you're concerned, we look just like the rest of them, okay? But it's what happens within our, our ecosystem, within our community, that creates all the difference. Because these companies are paid direct through smart contract for their work, they're not getting fees carved out of them as they would with some of these larger companies. So you mentioned about the guidance of your Please. platform. So specifically, from the perspective of small businesses, right. what, are, what could be the specific guidances that they will okay. be provided by Dream Change? And remember, real estate is a complex process. A mm -hmm. transaction is the final consequence, result of a whole lot of activity. And sometimes to get to a transaction, there can be anywhere as long as a year of planning up ahead. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a development, whether it's a, it's the acquisition of a large complex, or it's a securitization of a large complex, okay? Mm -hmm. We will now, Dream Chain will not take ownership of capital. We will be the guide of capital between or a transaction between two parties. Those transactions will happen in fiat our job is to guide that, that, that transaction to a successful conclusion. So we don't need to worry about the whole securitization issue under our model. But how we operate is each of the global partners, each one is an office within, let's say, Germany, within, let's say, the UK, let's say within uh, the Dubai. Each one of those offices will create a micro ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They know who the best in class is. They know they've got relationship. We're not talking about creating companies with startups. We're talking about DGP offices with long, uh, successful, highly reputable partners. The elites of the local. Who know their markets and have relationships already with mm -hmm. some very strong local, regional uh, service providers. Those combination of ecosystems. So let me step back a minute. The work then, let's just call it the work because it can be a transaction, a mm -hmm. feasibility study, a market study, it can be a portfolio uh, advisory assignment, multi-country, you know, that sort of thing. The role of that office will be to oversee the quality of work, not get in the way of that work. And once that quality of work is approved through the smart contract, through payment, those service providers get paid directly. But what we call the servant, the servant leader is over time, as we grow our ecosystem, you can't have chaos. FinTech is a chaotic environment of a million independent, really smart, different attempts to create solutions for efficiency mm -hmm. who can't really get a voice into the industry mm -hmm. because it's resistant. It's resistant to change, and it's really difficult when you understand how concentrated that market really is. It's really difficult for them to access and get their, their best in class or whatever their technologies out to that market. So that's how the dream chain works. Each one of those offices is overseeing the production of work mm -hmm. to ensure best quality before we then provide the consolidated work to the client. And right? all this is tracked on blockchain, on chain. All of it, so every smart contract, every every contract is immutable, it's it's permanent, the, it's, it's actually uh, transparent to the client. Mm -hmm. How did the work get done? Who was doing it? How, how much did they actually get paid? Mm -hmm. Half the time, what happens in real estate, I'm sorry to say, but uh, <laughs> a fee comes in to one, a firm who then hire subcontractors. And those subcontractors have to increase their fees because in fact, they're kicking back a piece well, of that fee yes, to that yes, central, right, money. okay? And, or they're just carving it out. So mm -hmm. in order for those service providers to make it up, they have to raise the fee. So the thing becomes more expensive. Our clients, anytime they want to, because that's the whole point of the blockchain, can go, if they want, go and see how the contract were divided, how uh, the work was done, that there was no changes. What we said was pricing was in fact actual pricing to mm -hmm. those service providers and there wasn't an added cost going to us. How do we make money? Is that we charge a fee against all work as our oversight. Oh, okay. 
It's like a consulting work. firm. Yeah, we're we're all, we're in a, uh, an interesting position of almost being client representative, uh, even as we're the the community overseer. Now, what'll happen over time as we build our culture? This compliance with work, with oversight of work, um, major decisions about what happens within the community will start to decentralize out to the individual members, more in a consortium style rather than everybody is doing it. We'll, as we grow and create that real, everybody gets that experience of how it gets done. And probably, I hope, are very proud of it. And every one of those companies, Gunther and Son, at the bottom of their card will say, a member of the dream chain, mm -hmm. which says, I'm not just a local company, I'm now part of this huge, you know, this enormous global group. So we're, we have access to information all over the world through this membership. And if a client you know, mm -hmm. comes across a small company, they see this logo of dream chain and they would say, what is this? And then they can look at your uh, track records on, on chain, track records, and you got see it. that it does well, actually do transaction globally. And, and what happens is as they cross the portal, of course, we, it's a get to know your client. We're going to ask, be asking them a pretty detailed request of information who they are, what they are, what do they want to do, how mm -hmm. much are they trying to do, you know, all of the questions that come in, that's called big data. Mm -hmm. Every time someone crosses the portal and every time a transaction gets done within the realm of uh, one, of the, uh, one of our ecosystems, we're collecting that data and we're going to give that back to our clients. So as they're using the dream chain, they're now accessing this the whole, data. Whole chunk of data globally. Which we'll keep, we'll continually to collect, process, and return. So that's part of the reward systems of being a part of the dream chain. Hate to cut you there, but we, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so uh, much for your time. Okay, well, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Pietro A. Doran, the president of Dream Chain. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Was that okay? That was very good. Good.